Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back uh, to my course, uh, there's the aspects of biochemical engineering. Now in the last uh, lecture, I tried to concentrate on the thermodynamics and uh, with thermodynamics as a whole, how, how thermodynamics, uh, what is the definition of thermodynamics and, uh, and uh, then also we also discussed the spontaneous reaction, non-spontaneous reaction with respect to the change of entropy, with respect to the free energy change and we have given how to calculate the entropy uh, of the process that we can easily, easily do that. Now, and this particular lecture will give you more stress on the chemical thermodynamics. Now, first, uh, first thing that I want to show you that is the thermodynamics of biomethanation process. As you know that, uh, that uh, biomethanation process is kind of anaerobic digestion process where the organic material is converted to methane and carbon dioxide. Now, when it, uh, when it produces methane and carbon dioxide, this uh, usually takes place in two different stages. One is called acid formation, another we call gas generation. Now, in case of, of, of acid formation, mostly it produces the volatile fatty acid like acetic acid, propionic acid, butyric acid and this acid subsequently that will be converted to methane and carbon dioxide. Now this here we have given some examples that uh, the kind of free energy change that we have in this, uh, in this. Uh, so uh, when, you, when you consider the glucose uh, in presence of water, it produces uh, 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 acetic acid and uh, hydrogen like this and, and this is the uh, b b carbonic acid and the free energy change is minus 49.2 kilocals. Now this, again this hydro, uh, this uh, carbonic acid in presence of hydrogen, it produce uh, acetic acid. So, so one mole of glucose usually produce three moles of acetic acid. Now we have total free energy change of this system is 74.3 kilocals. So um, this free energy change clearly indicate that uh, the reaction is favorable. Now if you look at the anaerobic digestion process, when you carry out the anaerobic fermentation process, the acid formation process are quite fast and the, uh, so we do not have much of problem with the acid formation process. Now uh, let us, uh, let us, uh, uh, this acid also can be can be formed from the carbon dioxide. You see the carbon dioxide and the hydrogen that form acidic, <laughs> that acetic acid. But if you look at the free energy change is minus uh, 18.7 kilocals. Now this free energy change and what we have previously free energy change, this is much less as compared to that. So that indicates the previous reaction is more favorable as compared to this reaction. Now when this carbon dioxide and hydrogen forms the methane and wa water, the free energy change is minus 33.2 kilocalories. That means when this carbon dioxide and hydrogen is most favorable for, for the production of methane rather than for the production of acetic acid. Now here, uh, the, as I pointed out that uh, intermediate, the volatile fatty acid that forms in this reaction is the acetic acid, this is uh, uh, propionic acid and this is the butyric acid. Now, now when this acid is converted to uh, acetic acid, uh, this is converted to methane and this, uh, so you find that if you look at the free energy change, this, uh, this conversion propionic acid to acetic acid is not favorable. The, the, the plus the free energy change is plus uh, 19.5 kilo kilocals, but butyric acid to acetic acid is 9.95 kilocals. Now, those who has the experiences 
with the anaerobic digestion process they know when we operate the anaerobic digestion process for longer period of time we find the accumulation of uh, propionic acid that takes place in the system because the reason is that you can find out is thermodynamically this degradation is unfavorable that is why we get in the long time operation we get in the fermentation broth we get more accumulation of propionic acid rather than butyric acid or acetic acid now uh, another is that the how nadh nad ph that uh, converted uh, in it to hydrogen and then to uh, then uh, this hydrogen how is converted to methane so overall that conversion process is like this uh, minus 14.8 kilocal so if you now you if you compare this with uh, the previous result you will find previous reaction by if you if you if you, if you look at this one and if you look at this one you will find this reaction is favorable as compared to this reaction this is how we can thermodynamically how we can determine which reaction is favorable which reaction is unfavorable now heat of formation that uh, the enthalpy of formation that uh, how we, uh, is the enthalpy change when one mole of pure compound is formed form is the element uh, the most stable uh, state is called the enthalpy of formation is denoted as del hf now graphite graphite when you uh, heat with uh, uh, water it uh, heat with uh, oxygen it produces uh, in presence of oxygen when graphite burn it produces carbon dioxide and this uh, the this is carbon dioxide quite stable form and uh, the the heat of formation is Uh, minus 393.5 kilojoules uh, per mole. Now, uh, the enthalpy of combustion. Now, uh, uh, that is the enthalpy of formation. I shall give you. I shall solve one problem. Then there, the enthalpy of formation will be much clearer. Now, here the enthalpy of combustion means uh, you burn the ethanol in presence of oxygen. and what is the final product that we have final product we have uh, carbon dioxide and water and this is heat of combustion is minus uh, 1365.5 kilojoules per mole the enthalpy of combustion so we can express as this now there is a uh, important law what is called hess law the hess law it says that the the standard enthalpy of a reaction is the sum of standard enthalpies of the reaction in which the overall reaction may be divided so this uh, this uh, this i shall show you that how this analysis can be done so uh, let me tell you again the hess law says the standard enthalpy of a reaction is the sum of the standard enthalpy of the reaction in which the overall reaction may be divided if i solve one problem i hope the conception will be clear <coughs> let us uh, let us take the example of the biological system this is in a biological cell that have a plenty supply of oxygen a plenty full supply of oxygen the glucose is oxidized completely to carbon dioxide and water muscle cells may be deprived of oxygen due to the vigorous exercise and in that uh, case one mole of glucose is converted to two moles of lactic acid by the process of glycolysis given the thermodynamic equation of the conversion of glucose and lactic acid is given here this is the <coughs> so here i can i can i can see this is glucose in presence of oxygen it produces carbon dioxide and water and uh, change of enthalpy is 2808 kilojoules now when lactic acid this is the lactic acid when it burns it uh, uh, in presence of oxygen it also produces carbon dioxide and water change of enthalpy is 1344 kilojoules now uh, that uh, Uh, we calculate the what we shall have to do we shall have to calculate the standard uh, b b b free energy change uh, standard enthalpy 
for uh, glycolysis from glucose to lactic acid to mole soluble. Is the biological process advantageous to complete oxidation of glucose compared to glycolysis? Explain your answer. So, which one is uh, more uh, advantageous in the biological system energy point of view, whether glucose should be converted to carbon dioxide and water or glucose should be partially converted to lactic acid. So, this problem deals with that. <coughs> now, uh, so uh, previously we have seen this is the equation that we have. Now, here uh, here, what do you, what do, what do we have? We have, we have seen that uh, uh, that one mole of uh, this uh, glucose produces six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. It has this. Now, six moles of uh, carbon dioxide and six moles of water, it can produce two moles of lactic acid and six moles of oxygen, and that required the enthalpy 2 into plus because it was minus previously since it is reverse direction it will be plus the rate of formation previously it was the rate of degradation. So, uh, it is plus 134 point. So, if you if you if you if you if you if you see the overall reaction if you minus this then this this will be cancel then I can write that one mole of glucose produce two moles of lactic acid and if you detect from this your free that enthalpy change is coming around 120 uh, kilojoules per mole. So, uh, what does it indicate? It indicate that it follows the standard, uh, it follows the standard enthalpy for the conversion of glucose to lactic, lactic acid during uh, glycolysis is 120 kilojoules per mole is merely the 4 percent of the enthalpy of conversion of glucose because amount of heat enthalpy generated during conversion of complete conversion of glucose to carbon dioxide water it will be uh, 4 percent of that and therefore, full oxidation of glucose in metabolic is more useful than glycolysis because the former is more energy <coughs> process more energy become uh, available for the performing the work. So, uh, if you energy point of view that glucose to carbon dioxide and water is more attractive as compared to glucose to lactic acid. <coughs> now, uh, I have taken another example that is uh, that is the heat of formation of ammonia and the heat of combustion of ammonia and hydrogen is given here. You can, you can look at here, this is the heat of, uh, this is the how uh, ammonia is, uh, this is the heat of combustion, how we can calculate heat of combustion of hydrogen, we can combo, convert, we can calculate like this and 3 moles of, uh, of hydrogen combustion, we do 3 into this. So, as per this reaction, we can calculate this one. Now, if you, if you look at the for the, 2 uh, moles of ammonia, we required 1 moles of nitrogen and 3 moles of hydrogen. The reversible, so if this formation what he required, we required uh, if, we, if, we, if we subtract, subtract uh, 3 from 1, so we subtract this to, to this, uh, then we will find this equation. This is 2 moles of ammonia <coughs> and uh, degraded nitrogen plus 3 moles of hydrogen. So, if you calculate from here, you will find this is the this is the plus uh, 188.58 kilocals. Now, this but uh, this is the this is the ammonia degradation. But we want to calculate the heat of formation of ammonia, so it will be reversible reaction. The reverse reaction in other direction, so it will be negative. This is positive in case of degradation, but in the formation it will be negative. So, heat of formation uh, for per 2 moles of uh, ammonia is, uh, is uh, 188.58 kilocals. So, per mole of ammonia will be divided by 2 that is 94.29 kilocals. Now, uh, the, so we, uh, we uh, in the last lecture uh, we discussed about the equilibrium of the uh, of the kind of uh, uh, process that we have. 
Now, uh, another uh, very interesting thing is that equilibrium that is largely applicable in the chemical process. Chemical process, uh, particularly if you look at the biochemical reaction, if you look at our metabolic pathway, most of the reaction they are reversible in nature. And when we carried out any kind of reversible reaction like, like uh, A to A reversibly give A to B. So, uh, there is a forward reaction, this is forward reaction and this is the backward reaction that we have. So, uh, so uh, under equilibrium condition, the rate of forward reaction should be equal to rate of backward reaction. So, that is the under equilibrium condition, to, uh, that, uh, that from that we can find out the equilibrium constant. The state of reversible reaction in which the concentration of the reactant and product do not change with time is called the the chemical equilibrium when that is exactly I told you that when rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of chemical reaction then we call it it is equilibrium conditions. Now <coughs> the characteristics of chem chemical equilibrium are several. The reversible reaction attains a state of equilibrium from reactant and product side and uh, at equilibrium the reactant and products both present and their concentration do not change with this. So, if you look at the if a rate of suppose A to B, B to like this. So, this is the rate of this is the um, rate constant for the forward reaction is K, K and K, this is K minus 1. So, I can write what is the rate of forward reaction? It is K 1 into um, C A and this should be this should be equal to K minus 1 into C B. So, this is at equilibrium condition it will so, so, so if you if you if you consider the equilibrium uh, constant capital K this should be equal to C B by C A or I can write this is K 1 by K minus 1. So, this is how you can calculate the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium is the dynamic in nature and reaction does not stop at this stage, but take place in both the direction with equal speed. Now, <coughs> this is the equal speed it take place. The equilibrium state is not affecting the presence of catalyst. This is very important. It only helps to attain the equilibrium state rapidly. The purpose of the catalyst in a reversible reaction is it not change the equilibrium constant, but it will it will help to attain the equilibrium constant at the at the faster rate. The state of equilibrium dis dis disturb <coughs> uh, uh, when the pressure, temperature, and concentration of reactant and products are changed. According to the this is uh, the, the according to the Lee Catlier principles, the free energy change is zero is at equilibrium. This I already explained in the last lecture. Now <coughs> we can we can explain the reaction like this. A A P B with so rate of forward reaction is explained like this rate of because ba the backward reaction is like, so under equilibrium condition both are same. So equilibrium constant is basically this is equal to concentration of product divided by concentration of reactant. So equilibrium constant constant of a particular reaction is uh, concentration of product by concentration of reactant. Now, one important thing is the what are the factors who will not do not influence the equilibrium constant. First, the concentration of reactant of product, <coughs> because you know that I can I can I can explain you K equal to uh, concentration of uh, substrate and concentration of product. Now, <coughs> now, uh, now uh, what what do you mean that uh, concentration? Suppose the concentration of uh, product is changes the concentration substrate will be changed. So, you know that uh, change in a manner so that we can attain the equilibrium condition. So, uh, okay, this I wrong, write wrongly, this will be product, sorry, this is product by substrate, sorry, I do write it wrongly. So, uh, as, uh, as the product concentration increases, the substrate uh, concentration should be increased so that, you know, it uh, K, it remain constant. Now, one interesting feature is that Suppose if we want to increase the product formation, our our uh, what is the what is our goal? 
our goal is to get more product if we want to get more product or if we take out the product time to time and then more substrate will be converted to product uh, uh, to keep the uh, equilibrium constant constant now uh, the examples are that the ethanol fermentation process uh, ethanol fermentation ethanol is a volatile component as the at the at the vacuum at a low temperature we can volatilize the ethanol now if you take out the ethanol more substrate will be converted to ethanol our productivity of the system will be increased the pressure and volume does not affect uh, this uh, so so concentration doesn't affect money as this changes this also changes and ultimately they will be constant the concentration do not affect the uh, equilibrium much because uh, and pressure and volume that also doesn't affect the equilibrium presence of catalyst that also does not equilibrium and uh, introduction of inert gas that also will not affect the equilibrium now uh, we have if you look at the uh, uh, for endothermic reaction that uh, k equilibrium increases with the rise of temperature and decrease with the decrease of temperature but in case of exothermic reaction it will be reverse that the equilibrium that uh, equilibrium constant will um, decreases with rise of temperature and increases with decrease of temperature now uh, if you go, if you if you bond up of uh, they explain the effect of temperature on this equilibrium constant by this equation lock uh, the equilibrium constant uh, of uh, eq2 and eq1 at two different temperatures it can be explained this is a change of enthalpy this r is the gas constant and this can be um, uh, that explained like this now uh, now uh, the, how we can correlate this with the gibbs free energy uh, change for the reversible reactions so we have already find that uh, uh, change of free energy we can explain like this the change of the free energy of the product minus free energy of substrate that will give the change of free energy and this is uh, g a uh, uh, is the uh, a of uh, and uh, and uh, g a uh, minus g a this this is the standard free energy change it can be explained by r t ln uh, concentration of a g b by g uh, g b 0 power 0 ln and this and this change of entropy can be uh, change of uh, inter that uh, free energy change can be written as uh, b b that standard free energy change plus r t l n concentration of product by concentration of substrate this can be explained like this and uh, this is very important why it is very important because this is del g equal to del g 0 plus r t l n k l n l n k equilibrium constant am i right now this uh, this uh, we uh, since the equilibrium constant is constant for a chemical reaction reversible reaction so we can have a del g value also constant so if it constant so we uh, del h value if we have you know a chemical chemical reaction we can find out easily we can calculate the value of ke value and we can find out at what extent the reaction take place so this is one of the major purpose of the thermodynamics of the chemical reaction that tells you that to, to what extent the reaction take place now here del g equal to rt ln <coughs> this uh, if you if you solve it here and if we at equilibrium if you if you if you find out that if you if you assume that uh, the equilibrium del the change of free energy change is zero then uh, standard free energy change equal to minus rt ln uh, uh, ln k so if we know in a particular chemical reaction if we have know the standard free energy change from that we can easily calculate the uh, equilibrium constant now here the very interesting thing is that if k uh, if if we uh, if we if we have k equilibrium constant greater than 1 then uh, the log uh, k ln is positive del g equal to negative 
the, and uh, if this is uh, less than 1, then log uh, k is negative and del g will be positive. So, if uh, del g is uh, g, this uh, equal to standard free energy change is 0, then k equivalent is 1, but if del g is less than 0, then k is uh, greater than 1 and when del g is uh, greater than 0 that is uh, is positive then k is less than 1. So, this is the uh, this is how how there is a correlation between the Gibbs free energy change and the equilibrium constant it can be explained like this. Now, uh, this is a problem that we have uh, but this uh, gives you some idea that uh, how we can find out uh, that uh, equilibrium constant of a uh, that a reaction with the help of free energy change. The problem says that uh, at uh, 200 Kelvin a certain reaction that uh, del G uh, is 5.08 kilo kilojoules per mole. So, what is the k, k equivalent equilibrium for this reaction at this temperature? And I told you previously that uh, that. Uh, that uh, this uh, this uh, gives the free energy change uh, that correlation also help you to find out the equilibrium constant. Now we I have we have the correlation of the free energy change standard free energy change equal to minus R T L N K U. Now K U K equilibrium constant that you know that we, this is not given. We have the rate constant 8.314. This is known to us and temperature is 2000 uh, Kelvin and uh, your change of free energy is this, the, then we can find out that uh, that means, that means if a k is, uh, k is uh, uh, fraction that means, uh, your del g uh, as del g is the less than 0 is greater than 0, then k is less than 1. So, this is this is justified because if you look at <coughs> sorry we have we have seen here if 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 k is less than 1 then this should be uh, uh, positive more than 0 that is only positive So, in this in this problem it is clear that <coughs> this is this is this is less than 1 So, k is less than 1. So, <coughs> this should be positive. So, the, the, so this uh, this is quite rele relevance to this so what we have we told you previously. So, so uh, in conclusion, I want to, to point out that what we, we 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 get from the reaction thermodynamics. Reaction thermodynamics basically uh, gives us couple of information. First information we get uh, that how the entropy influence the nature of the reaction. I told you if entropy is positive, then the reaction will be spontaneous, and. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, when uh, when the entropy is negative, that is not spontaneous. And uh, same thing happens to uh, some. Th the we can correlate uh, the free energy gives free energy change. How the standard free energy is correlated to the nature of reaction. If the Gibbs free energy change is negative, that means it is a, a exothermic reaction. If it is positive, it indicates the endothermic reaction. Now. <coughs> the Gibbs uh, free energy change is equal to minus R T L N uh, equilibrium constant. Since the equilibrium constant of a particular chemical reaction is constant, so uh, so uh, we can uh, and with the del G value that uh, at a particular temperature that should be constant. So from that uh, we can find out that to what extent the reaction takes place. Suppose if we know uh, the free energy standard free energy change of a chemical reaction or biochemical reaction, we can easily find out that uh, equilibrium constant. I have we try to solve one problem, and you find out that how the equilibrium constant can be determined to be from the uh, standard free energy change. So, so uh, this. Uh, 
So, basically that the thermodynamics gives two different information to us uh, that uh, what is the nature of the reaction that take place, second, uh, second information that we have to what extent the reaction take place. Thank you very much.